They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn. Kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in the farmer's kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by... L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Harvest Energy Solutions. Harvest cabins when you absolutely have to get away. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Good Foods Co-op, Marksbury Farm Market, Weisenberger Mill, your village shop. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Is that for me? It is. I want you to wear this up behind your ear. I'm not going to wear it. Okay, I'll hold it. You know what? We got a lot on our show today. We're going to move some fence into this pasture right here, we're going to open up some new areas Good for the sheep with the movable, the movable fence. I can't just say sheep now because yeah. we have the guys, Myron and Marvin, or what's Milton. the other Milton. Milton. Oh, excuse me. Milton. You named them. That's right. So anyway, we've opened up this area with our movable fence, which all we have to do is really stick it in the ground, stomp it in, hook power up to it, and guess what? You've got yourself an enclosure that will keep your critters in. They're going to love this, too. We're getting new sheep today. Okay. We're getting two weathers. You know what a weather is? No, what's a weather? They're a little boy that's been fixed. So what are you going to name those? Because <laughs> um, they're going to eat them then, right? Is that the plan? Medallion and meatloaf. I like that. Yes. Okay. And then uh, their mama is going to be Mama Mia. I like that, Mama Mia. Mama Mia. I like that. Now, I've mowed my spot so I can set my fence up. Now, here's what we're doing today, but I've got a surprise for you in a minute. We're okay. going to go later on. We're going to go meet up with Richard McAllister. We're going to talk about the educational aspects of what is grass-fed beef, what is different about it, what's not different about it, so on and so forth. Are we going to taste? Can I go? Oh, we'll taste. Okay, I'll go with and you. And then we're going to talk to uh, Mr. Allen Martin. Okay. It's going to come over here. We might sling some honey today. Oh, yeah. Once he takes everything apart and if it looks good, we might sling some honey. Okay. Now, I found you a surprise. More flowers? Nope. Oh. What do you think it is? A snake? Do I need my shovel to chop it up? Nope. Do you want to don't chop snakes up. Snakes are our friend. They catch mice and voles and all that kind of Alrighty. stuff. No, really, okay. seriously. All right, follow me. And I also want to show you again what poison ivy is because you light do. up like a Christmas tree yes, about I once do. a week when you get poison ivy. Follow me. And I'm going to show you something really cool. You look out in this field and you see daisies and all kinds of stuff. But look what happens when you dig a little deeper. Oh, my goodness. Look right there. And look all around you. Look at your feet. Look right here. Can I eat one? Yes, these are wild strawberries, mm. and they're everywhere. Those are sweet. They are sweeter than what you get in the store. That one's not quite right, but it's ready. Look around you, Nikki. When you look back over here, they're everywhere. What can we make? I don't know. We're just eating. I'll tell you what. Let's do. Let's go ahead and get our fence started. And once we get our fence up, we'll pick some of these. And our friends will be coming with some more sheep here very shortly.
Richard McAllister. Good evening. I'm back. <laughs> yes. Now, I've had to sit back and watch this. this is, you're torturing me with all these wonderful, wonderful things that we're going to eat tonight. We're, but we're here for a reason. Our show is an educational show, and I get a lot of questions about what is this, what is that, how'd you do this, how'd you do that, why'd you do this, why'd you do that? So it's our job to say, when somebody asks, to do our best to find somebody sure. to answer questions. And here recently, why grass-fed beef? Why are you worried about uh, you know uh, hormones? Why are you worried about this, that, or the other? Let's talk about grass-fed beef. This, what we've got tonight, is top sirloin from grass-fed you beef. You like top sirloin. I love top is sirloin. Is that your favorite cut? It's my favorite cut from the animal. Really good flavor, very tender, affordable. Mm -hmm. It, uh, you know, the the, the ribeye and the and the tenderloin are the are the favorite cuts. Uh, but, but they're missing out by not trying. I this. think so because I think this is as tender as, as as and more flavor. And this is a good time right now to talk about if you wondered where this cut came from. We just happened yeah. to have done a video not too long ago. If you missed this, this is well worth your while to take a look and see where each particular cut comes from. Yep. I've heard more than one person here recently say this is their favorite cut. Okay, back to the grass-fed. You know, in Kentucky, we have a incredibly um, renewable resource, an incredible renewable resource, which is our grass. Mm -hmm. Sun, rain, we had them both today. The grass is growing. Cattle are herbivores. Back before we started Cellulose. messing with them, they did not. They weren't eating grain. <laughs> they do. They right now. That doesn't mean that their that their system can't cope with a wee bit of grain but maybe not quite as much as some of the, the, the feeding that's going on. The farmers that supply us in, in, in our area, in Kentucky, are producing a wonderful grass-fed product. It's antibiotic-free, hormone, apart from their own, obviously, <laughs> and steroid-free <laughs> right, product. Right. Um, it's a wee bit more lean than what people traditionally have become accustomed to in the supermarket. Not all of the cuts are, are more lean, though. It, it's just that particular, some particular cuts are, particularly the ribeye and the strip, a little bit leaner. Wonderful flavor. We hang meat for 14 days. It gives us a wee bit of tenderness. Flavor is a little is enhanced, a little stronger. That is the great thing about our local movement today. Yeah. You know where your stuff comes yep. from. Is that not lovely? It's awesome. It's I mean, wonderful. You can get it at the farmer's market. You can buy it at the mainstream grocery stores now. And know where it comes from. That's know your right. farmer by name. That's, an, that's nice. That's an important now, factor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Educational part is over. Now you need to taste it. I cannot keep smells, right. but let's, let's first of all, okay. tell us what you did here. Okay, so a couple of petite sirloin steaks. Uh, we, first of all, heavy salt and pepper. We put a wee bit of thyme grated some garlic and put a wee bit of oil and just left it to sit for an hour just for the flavors to get happy and then the oil helps sizzle it a little bit when it goes on the grill flavors are in there we've got uh, a chimichurri uh, traditional South American herb uh, chopped herb and, and red wine vinegar um, and red pepper flake we've got a not a terribly traditional steak sauce it's got a wee bit of different stuff in it sort of a la bobby filet so it's got some chipotle in it and some other is heat. this a secret recipe he, no you get it on his misa grill oh no kidding yeah <laughs> I, we modified it a wee bit but it's very interesting honey and and i think we use maple syrup instead you can find anything and horseradish in and then these are just our skillet fried New potatoes. Those are not just skillet fried. We bit of lard. <laughs> put some lard in here. You boil them ahead of time. Yep. You smashed them down in there. Salt and pepper, oregano, and uh, and potatoes. Are you ready to have a wee sliver? I'm ready for a, okay. a few wee slivers. Okay. Maybe several wee slivers. Let's see what this looks like in there. So we'll That's start beautiful. by going across it. Now, do you think that most Americans overcook their beef? I think that that tends to be a, a problem. And that's what people have issue with, with grass-fed. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of things. I think that a grass-fed, when the meat is aged for, a, for too long, the fat tends to get a fairly strong flavor. Mm -hmm. well, do you mind if I do Oh, please. A little bit of that juice. There we go. So, do you want me to put a wee bit of the sauces yes, on, on yeah, just a couple let's, pieces let's there? And then, so, and then you can just you can try one with... One on its own, one with chimichurri, one without. See what you think. We'll put a wee bit of salt on this one. It 
Is it tender enough? It was beautiful. I love the chimichurri. That's our that's our grass-fed beef that we like to play with on the mm. grill. The key, again, for me, is to let it sit and rest mm. for a little bit after it comes off that grill. But how do you convince somebody who says, I, I can't eat that, it's, I see red or I see blood or I see... But it's a solid muscle group. There's no harm in and you're searing all around the whole exterior of it. There's nothing in there that's going to do you any damage. <laughs> Not a ground product. Now, that's a different thing. <laughs> the whole muscle group. Now, I noticed Wyatt in the background. He's busy to be running around here, running around there, taking all these ingredients. What's he making for us tonight? He's got, uh, he's got a skirt steak as well that we've got for some little uh, tacos. And then we've also got some jambalaya in a Dutch oven, which, again, the crust you get with the rice. Now what do you call this fancy grill back here that you've got? Is that kind of a South American? It is. It's, a, it's inspired by the Argentinians and the, the Uruguayans, I guess, um, where you, you have a, a main area where you burn your coals, mm -hmm. burn your wood, your coals drop through, and you move your coals to wherever, whatever cooking area, whether it's a grill or the Dutch ovens, or we've got a yakitori style grill, which is the Japanese style. So we're doing a cowboy cooking segment. Where's your hat? Man. You forgot your hat. Under the truck. It's not a cowboy hat, though. <laughs> Next time we do Dutch oven, you've got to wear a cowboy hat. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> it's as, always fun. As always. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Wyatt, you have been scurrying around here, um, preparing stuff. I was standing over here, literally grueling <laughs> some of the stuff you were doing now okay this this is like a cowboy uh, cooking segment on steroids oh yeah and you have to learn it takes a while to learn how, how much to put around the bottom and that so you don't burn oh, yeah. yeah it's not you know it's not a microwave where you just hit buttons <laughs> or a burner where you just turn the knob but you, it takes some patience it does and you learn that but you know anything that you can cook in your oven at the house you can do this oh easy. it's a temperature deal yeah you can Plain make bread you can do anything what did you make tonight uh, it's a uh, jambalaya uh, just one pot, a little bit of everything. Started out uh, rendering some uh, smoked andouille. Gotcha. Got that fat rendered, got the, the casings crispy, pulled that out. Took some uh, bone-in chicken thighs. It's chicken season. Thighs are the only way to go, right? Oh yeah, it's, it's I, I don't know why. You know, people don't buy more of them. They're, I don't either, that's all we Chicken breast crowd, but I mean, thighs, that's all the flavor. Browned the skin on those, removed that. So we got all the rendered fat from the sausage. The chicken skin's all crispy. You get some of that in there. And then uh, threw some bay leaves in just to fry those a little bit, get that flavor imparted early. Started out uh, with onions, a little bit of that, got it, got those coated, let those fry, let the coals, let the vessel heat back up, dump everything in there, it gets cold, you're not developing any flavors that way. So once those were, got a little bit of color, added some uh, celery, same process there, and then bell pepper. So what we did was the, the Trinity, big, big down, uh, you know, jambalaya, it's Creole cuisine, that kind of thing. So we got those all stirred together, threw some sprigs of fresh thyme in there, a little bit more olive oil if you need it just to get them coated, because you got it, you have to fry it, you gotta develop the flavors. Then we added the rice. How much rice? Oh, about three cups, three cups of rice for, for this for this size vessel. And got it coated in all the fat, got it fried, got it toasted, really started developing those flavors of the rice itself. Then we hit it with some, uh, actually with some Argentinian wine, some white wine we did to deglaze, and just a nice, Nice coat of it, probably about a cup, cup and a half. Just coat the bottom of the, of the whatever you're cooking in. Stir that up, let all that wine soak into the rice. And then we added some smoked pork stock. It gets better and better. Oh yeah, you just, My every, job. every chance, you know. How do I do this? How do I survive this? I, I don't know. It's tough. <laughs> it was real tough. It. You Somebody's look so it. distraught. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm out of my mind. Yeah. I'll probably be okay though. Yeah, I, I, I believe in you. Yeah. So we'll then what? It. Then what? Oh, stir it all together. You know, smoked pork stock tastes a lot better than water. Ooh, tastes oh, yeah. better than, you know, anything you're going to get at the store. Put the chicken thighs back in there and the sausage as well. Kind of got that stirred together underneath the liquid. Put the lid on top, coals on the top to get the heat all over. Just go do something else. Walk away. How long? 45 minutes. That's all? Yeah. So the rice absorbs all the flavor, you know, all the liquid, the flavors, gets a nice crust from the coals. That permeates throughout the whole dish. And then... You love your job, don't you? Yeah. I can tell fun. you do. It's fun. <laughs> now, I also saw you taking some... Uh, 
when you say garlic bread, you typically think about somebody pouring butter and just put some oh, garlic yeah, people, on. Some butter, garlic, and margarine. How do you, know. you do garlic bread? On the fire. On the Why fire. not? You know, if it's going. It's there. Yeah, it's there. It's going. You can cook anything on it. So took a nice uh, rustic French style loaf, a little drizzle of olive oil, got some char on it, and just rubbed it with a garlic clove. Really? That's all you need. That's garlic bread. Oh, that's garlic bread. Oh, we got to peek at this a second. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Let me see that. Yeah? You know what I could do with that? I don't know. Uh, it's not quite October yet, is it? I don't need I'm talking about <laughs> when I catch a fish, I don't need it. Could you help me? Yeah. Get some duct tape? Yeah, I, oh, I always got duct tape around. I like that. Yeah, I got duct tape in the trunk right now. <laughs> All right, All right. back to the... Sorry. Oh, yeah, not wow, just look yet. at that. That's a work of art right yeah. there. So you can see the crust that developed oh. along the outside. Oh. And it, all the sausage brown throughout. Oh. Chicken thighs. <laughs> that That is a work of art. Yeah, it's great. You want to give it a shot? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I probably should. All right, let's uh, make sure you get some of the crust from the side here. Oh, man. This same procedure could be applied to any combination of ingredients. You know, now, now, obviously, you don't have to have this fancy smancy grill we got behind us you can do this on your dutch oven with briquettes oh, in your backyard yeah, yeah definitely could do that oh look at that sausage what you get from the short grain rice is a good good amount of starch good flavor there it helps kind of keep everything nice and tight so oh man kenna oh, oh please <laughs> i insist look at this oh look at that just, just breaking apart falls right apart look at that i'm gonna try to get a little bit of everything on my fork it's gonna be hot, right? Yeah, a little warm. A little warm. It is a little warm. A little warm. <laughs> Come on. Skin on the roof of your mouth is overrated. Yeah. What do you really need it for? It's just it's when just, you're hungry. Yeah. You just get in there. I knew better, but I couldn't stand it. You could not put that in front of me and make me not eat it. That was just mean. Beautiful. Thank you. Sun's still up. Yeah. Grill's still hot. Oh yeah, you can all day long. What else you got? Got some uh, some skirt steaks, do some tacos. If you have the time. I probably got the time and I'll, I'll probably save just a little bit of space for that. Let's do that, but first let me take a couple more bites here. So Wyatt, what's my next torture? What, the horror, the things you're doing to me, what's what's the next step? Tacos, uh, the in inevitable off of the grill. You gotta have tacos. Now let's talk about skirt steak. Where does it come from? It's it's a flap meat, so mm -hmm. it it's kind of from the chest down on the beef. Like and a again, flank take steak. take a look at our video we did on, yeah. on the processing of the beef. Yeah, yeah it's just uh, you only get a very small, small amount off of the animal. So usually, you know, we'll get tossed aside or ground. Fairly ground inexpensive. Up. But yeah, it's, it's always easy to find. Uh, we did a rub and let it sit for, for a while. It was very, very simple rub. It was uh, cumin, smoked paprika, salt in equal parts. That's it? Mm -hmm. Like a third right. a cup of each. I like, I like simple stuff. Just let it, let it sit for a while. Uh, let it just really soak into the meat. That uh, salt will pull out some of the moisture and then it'll reabsorb back into the steak too so it'll bring all of that all of that flavor right back into it and then just it cooks very quickly very thin steak just over hot coals one turn one flip and, and you're there take it off let it rest and then we'll, we'll slice it up for some tacos and on, on the side here we did very very simple slaw cilantro chopped up some shredded cabbage and we zested some lime and squeezed the juice into it as well a little drizzle of honey just to kind of sweeten it out a little bit of salt and just let that rest too and that's it Real quick and simple slaw perfect summertime summertime accompaniment to a taco now some people's issues with a steak like this is they'll just go right at it they'll mm -hmm. just cut it you know it's a long very easy to just think oh I'll, you know I'll just cut it this way but that's the muscles that runs this way so what you want to do is cut it into two pieces and then rotate it so you have the striations going this way. And this is, you want to slice here to go against the grain. So just super thin slices. That smells heavenly. We took some flour tortillas, 
warm those up as well. So we'll just get. I get like right where you're going, here. Wyatt. Oh yeah, it's starting to come together. So. I'm not gonna. I'm probably not gonna burn my mouth on this because this no, is really no. cool. Yeah, you'll you'll be fine. All right. No, Look no at burning that. there. Look at that. A little bit of slaw. Nice little Nothing acidic, heavy acidic there. punch. There's, there's no light and crisp. You could probably, uh, I'd say, you could probably eat about ten of these if you tried hard. Oh, I believe I probably could. Uh, probably Even now, after all I've eaten. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very simple taco. How about that? Perfect for a cookout. Quick and easy. I got half Immediately <laughs> tasted that cilantro and lemon. Oh yeah. Gives it a little, little pop. Brightens everything up. A little acidity just brings it all forefront. And then you start tasting the paprika. Mm -hmm. So I would re recommend you do eat at least five of these. We can do that. Maybe seven and a half. I'm We're split the last one. Yeah, I'm fine with that. You know what? Thank you so much yeah. for showing us some new stuff. No problem. Cooking us some nice smoky flavored food. Mm -hmm. And I was starving, and I still am starving. So when we turn the cameras off. We got tacos to eat. You want to have a contest so you can eat the most? Uh, you're already a little bit ahead of me, mm -hmm. so we got to start over. <laughs> the dude is back, Alan Martin. What's going on, fella? You know what? We talked down here just last week, I guess it was. Mm -hmm. And I said, can we, can we, can we, can we? Do we have any, we got any honey? And you said, we can do it. We can do it. I said, we can do it. So as we sit here on the front porch, you saw the new sheep coming in. Mm -hmm. I'm, I think I've got some chiggers because we were picking one. strawberries and stuff like that. But, you know, hey, it is what it is. So we're up here on the front porch today. What are we doing on the front porch? We're going to sling some honey. He brought his slinger. This right here is, uh, you'll see this in a minute, but this actually turns this thing that goes around and around, and it slings the honey out, slings of, it out. out of the frame. It's a centrifugal force, basically. It's a two-frame slinger. Tell us what you did today while we were chasing sheep around. Well, what I did while y'all were chasing your sheep today is uh, I went down there and pulled the frames out of the super on there, got the bees out of them, you know, and brought another box to set the frames down in. So basically what we've got here is a box full of uh, frames that are ready to be slung. Now that hive is a two-year-old hive. Mm -hmm. Now we let them build up, they made it through the winter, everything's good, they're bringing lots of stuff in, so they're good to go. We're not, I mean, they're not going to starve to death. No, no, they're, they're good to go now. They're good. So, so I'm going to ask a selfish question. How long before I get more honey out of them? Uh, well, at the time of the year it is right now, uh, your, your flow is going to start slowing down right mm -hmm. now. Uh, but you will get some. You should get another box, at least another box this fall. Wow. Now, we talk about seasonal allergies. My allergies are bad in the spring and in the fall. I got them in the spring and I got them in the fall. This right here is, spring. is the spring stuff. The spring stuff. Now, in the fall, it's the ragweed that gets me. And they're going to be working that ragweed. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, this is nature's gift and nature's yeah. way to heal. Now, what are you going to do here? Tell us what we're going to do. So you're just going to... Like, I'm just going to... Uh, I brought a fillet knife. Just take a fillet knife, lay it on here, and just cut these cappings off right here. And then we'll place it in the slinger and sling it out. It's just that simple. It's, it's just that simple. And then what we do once we sling out one side is we'll take and pick them up, turn them around, and sling out the other side. So you once you that centrifugal force draws that out, it flows down the bottom of this. Mm -hmm. You open this up. You go out into this through the strainer through, through the, the strainer cheese cloth. The cheese cloth. That gets any anything that might. Yeah, pretty much anything out. You know, you can, you can get finer strainers, but you know, just for just pretty much get everything out that you need to. Then basically pour from there into the jars. Into the jars, and you're ready to go. Look at that. That's all yours. Look at that. That is beautiful. So here we took one super off and slung this, and I don't know how many jars I'm gonna get. This thing's still got quite a bit of honey in it. Yeah, yes. And yeah. we're still pouring. What are you gonna do with all your honey? Uh, sell a lot of it. If sell I'm lucky. a lot of your honey. Now yes, here's sir. now I can't help it. Here's what's gonna happen. Folks out there watching this show, they can say, how can we get some of B dudes honey? Contact you and. Uh, uh, it's going to take you a while to get set up, yeah, yeah, and all that. Yeah, it's not yeah, happening today. I haven't slung yet. You know, I'm, I'm looking at it. We'll be here in another few weeks before I'm slinging. So they contact us. Yeah, we'll we'll, 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 we'll take care of it. Thank you so much for being a friend and Appreciate helping out on, around the farm here. Look at that. Liquid gold. You know what this is a good time for? What's that? It's a real good time to talk about our Facebook page. Check it out, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Like it. 
see where we're going and what we're doing. Also, check out timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. There's, I think, close to 300 things on there. If you've never seen some of our recipes, get on there, take a look. And remember, it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. Honey, per se. See you next week. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to Furniture World Superstore, Ken Cove Farm Fence Supplies, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm, Your Village Shop. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by The City of Stanford, Kentucky. Come back home to Stanford. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. Jones, this is Shirley speaking. How may I help you? Oh, hey, Neil. How are you? How was the trip? With nearly 7 million investors. It's right here. Hold on one sec. You'd expect us to have a highly skilled call center. Kevin, Neil Holly's on line one. Okay, great. And we do. It's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing.